muted because I'm getting feedback. I will let you know that sometimes headsets get in the way. I'm not exactly sure why. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for joining us on this beautiful Wednesday, April 22nd. Happy Earth Day to all of you around the world. Um, I hope it's sunny. If not outside, then in your brain space. And if not, it will be after this three o'clock stamp chat. I can guarantee it. We're all gathered here for lifelong learning and continued philatelic expansion. And I really thought I'm really excited to bring on our guest today, uh, Dr. David Stripmatter. He is professor of public history, of uh, professor of uh, history and museum studies at Ohio Northern University. And I bumped into uh, Dr. Stripmatter on Twitter a few months ago when I was going through the feed and I saw, and forgive me, uh, Professor, that I forget the exact post, but basically it was, uh, it piqued my interest because he said that he was using postage in his collegiate level classes. And I, I thought that that was a fascinating way of um, promoting stamps and using them in the classroom. And as our di uh, executive director, Scott English, is always saying, uh, there are many doors to the hobby. And certainly when we incorporate stamps in the classroom, that opens up doors to the hobby. So um, I, I really thank Dr. David for uh, coming on to Stamp Chat and look forward to hearing about how the, the kids responded and, and the different messages they learned. and. Um, Thanks again to all the APS members for your membership, your continued membership. This is exactly uh, the, where your funding is going, one of the facets, but uh, we appreciate your continued support. And David, I'm gonna mute myself and let you take over the show. Well, thanks so much. Uh, good afternoon, uh, or I guess depending on where you're logging on from, good evening or good morning. Um, I thank you, Heidi, again, for reaching out to me um, and inviting me to give this um, stamp chat. I admit that, that my interest in stamps is a relatively recent development. Uh, about a decade ago, after my uh, grandparents passed away, um, we found four or five uh, shoe boxes full of unused sheets um from the 50s through the through the 80s um i mean li literally hundreds if not um heck, probably thousands of dollars of of, of unused postage stamps. And, and for me looking through these stamps was was more or less a an illustrated uh history textbook um and so i'm a college history professor so i've been able to kind of transition this personal interest of of mine in, into uh my professional setting which is uh the classroom and and about 15 months ago uh i was teaching at washington and jefferson college in pennsylvania and the school had just implemented uh a two-week january term uh short semester a kind of a two-week uh term where faculty members could offer uh, specific or very niche uh, classes. So I, I taught uh, one entitled The History of Postcards and Stamps. And, and I think it was uh, pretty successful. I mean, it, we talked about postal history and collecting and material culture. Um, and uh, maybe a couple of, of humorous stories um, or a, a humorous uh, story from this experience. And I think this illustrates uh, a generational shift uh, maybe with how people communicate. Um, on the first day of class, uh, I had every student write a and, and send a postcard. They just dropped them on my desk at, at, the, at the end of class. And it was uh, clear to me uh, pretty quickly that I had, uh, I had made a mistake. Um, I should have offered more instructions. Um, because five of the 18 students in the class uh, did not put the stamp in the right place on the postcard. Uh, eight of the 18 students did not write the address in the right place on the postcard. Uh, and they admitted to me that only 
uh, I think only three of them had actually sent a postcard um, uh, previously, like in, in their life. Uh, th this is a picture of them uh, sending uh, a letter to the Citizens Stamp Advisory Committee where they proposed a new stamp. And, and I tweeted about this uh, and, and the U.S. Postal Service uh, got in touch with me via uh, yeah, direct message, and, and they interviewed me and a couple of my students about this, and there was actually a brief article, yeah, there we go, how embarrassing, uh, there was a brief article about this class uh, that appeared on the USPS website, and, and I guess using Twitter got the attention of, uh, of the stamp folks too, so Heidi, again, thank you for, for reaching out uh, you know, a month ago or, or so. Um, so today, I, I, I want to show a few slides and maybe talk a bit about um, how I have used stamps in the college classroom. And I think most basically, uh, I want my students to think about stamps as uh, historical artifacts uh, and not just stickers to send a piece of mail, okay? Uh, and so um, I, I put this, uh, slide together. My, when I use this in class, my students have seen this, but they have a couple of questions that I um, that maybe I, I I raised to 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 bring me uh, bring them to their attention here. But why were specific stamps made when they were made? And um, today, as I as I go through these, I, I'll, I'll show you a number of of stamps, and and there are lots of reasons. Uh, why, why, why stamps are made, they can be commemorative, they can play to current events or geopolitics and certainly uh, forward or, or create uh, raise awareness for, for various causes. So um, uh, I, I encourage my students to think about stamps as, uh, as a witness to a specific era, uh, a specific place in time. Um, and this is uh, you know, another aspect to this, right? Uh, is there uh, an agenda or a cause uh, that the stamp is in service of? And then uh, it starts to get a little humorous at times when when some subjects of stamps are, are outdated or or uh, politically incorrect. Um, or I think probably the, the, the best question to ask with some of these uh, would it would that stamp be issued today. Would the U.S. Postal Service put out that stamp um, in, in 2020? And then um, finally, this is kind of the, the end all, the big question that I ask my students to, to think about, but uh, what does that stamp tell us about the society that produced? Uh, and I think uh, you can probably look to um, other countries. It's not just the United States that uh, that have these agendas on postage stamps, uh, but I think it's a, a worthwhile uh, way to, to think about this. So um, I think I, I will uh, proceed with with some some images. I have lots of uh, lots of um, stamps that I will uh, put in front of you here. Um, uh, but why was that stamp made when it was made? I mean, what is going on? Uh, and I think the big hint certainly is the price of the first class uh, postage. Um, but certainly we have stamps that are uh, that are commemorative. Um, I mean, this is a JFK stamp and, and then a, a, a little plate here of, of FDR stamps. And these are uh, memorial stamps shortly after uh, the deaths of these two presidents. And I think commemorations or certainly anniversaries are a very common, uh, a very common uh, impetus for a stamp. Um, perhaps last year, uh, lower left hand uh, part of the slide, um, the 150th anniversary of, of the Golden Spike out, in, out at, at Promontory Point in Utah. Um, but then, as you can see, I mean, all of these stamps, okay, we have 500 years of the Gutenberg Bible, we have 100 years of Canada, uh, and on and on. But anniversary is really a uh, common formulation with uh, stamps, um, certainly in the United States, okay? 
Um, I think things get a little more exciting when uh, when I put stamps in front of students that that have to deal with current issues uh, or current events, rather. So um, I uh, speaking to uh, someone earlier today. They uh, well, Eric, I think Eric mentioned this earlier that uh, you know he got into uh, stamp collecting along with the bicentennial of 1976, and I think uh, I suspect a, a, quite a few of you are kind of nodding your heads along with me here, but. Uh, the U U.S. Postal Service put out so many different uh, bicentennial stamps. You know, all of these, all of these founding fathers and great scenes um, from the Revolutionary War. Um, and it's not just this. I mean, we could we could go on um, on and on. Thirteen centers uh, from 1976, but the bicentennial bicentennial was big. Um, I also put uh, this one in, in front of my students. I mean, why are we making so many uh, NASA uh, space stamps in the 1960s? And um, this is right in, uh, in the crux of the, of the space race uh, with the Soviet Union. Um, and I also mentioned that this is not, it's not just us, the Soviets are doing this too. Uh, and I, I don't, um, I don't have these stamps per se, but certainly you can, you can find them online. Uh, but again, in service of, of a larger cause here and, you know, promoting uh, nationalism during, um, during the space race. Uh, there are more. Oh, last, last one on the space race. I, I, I mean, I've always thought this is a really neat uh, stamp plate, but this happens in the United States, and then uh, the Soviets did it too. Uh, it's the same stamp, just in different different language here. When Apollo and Soyuz finally uh, teamed up uh, in the mid in the mid seventies. Uh, this one's pretty timely. Admittedly, when I when I gave this. Uh, showed these slides about a month and a half ago. Uh, my students uh, did not uh, get this one. Um, perhaps if I gave this lecture today, uh, they would, because it is the 50th anniversary of, of Earth Day uh, right here on, on April 22nd. Um, but this, this, this plate came out in 1970, right? I mean, why, why are these stamps being made uh, when they're being made, right? Um, this come, this play came out later in the in in 1970, uh, but but certainly um, awareness is uh, at the forefront um, here. Now, um, my students did not get this one either. Uh, this is <laughs> I believe this was the early 80s, maybe 81 or 82. Uh, but McGruff the Crime Dog. Uh, is featured on a U.S. postal stamp, and uh, and why is that? Um, again, I'm looking for historical context for the students. Again, they weren't able to come up with Earth Day, um, and they were not. They also weren't able to to come up with uh, this this, uh, however per perceived or real, the '80s crime wave. They were not able to come up with this one. But that's okay. That's that's okay. There there are others other. other uh, historical uh, current events, current issues that, uh, that they did hit up. Um, they, uh, one student did pick up on this one. Okay, so this stamp came out in 1985. And why, I guess this is the question, why are folks concerned about hunger in 1985? Um, perhaps more popular than this postage stamp um, was uh, that great super group. Uh, this is this stamp comes out the same year as uh, "We Are the World." That that uh, you know every uh, every famous singer and their uncle um, you know performed this uh, before performed this single that I, I believe uh, got to number one on the on the uh, Billboard charts. Okay. Um, a couple of really. Um, 
really, I, I think the 77 um, energy conservation stamp is really pretty. I've always thought that's a really pretty stamp, but um, why are these stamps being made in the 1970s? And these, these, again, these are the issues of the day. I mean, the energy conservation stamp would make less sense in the 1950s, okay? Uh, and what we have here are historical snapshots into a time and place. Um, and what's going on? Well, we have the we have the energy crisis, the oil shortages of, of the 70s. Um, again, some great images here that um, my students actually did pick up on this one. They uh, there were a couple of them that that were aware of uh, these uh, these events of of the 1970s. Um, these two stamps, um, I asked my students, you know, why is the U.S. Postal Service putting out a couple of register and vote stamps in 64 and 68? And, and uh, the first answer I got was uh, that those are election years. And I'm like, yeah, yes, that, that is true. That is true. That's a good answer. Um, but why is this, why do these stamps come out in 64 and 84 and not 80, I'm sorry, uh, 84 and why do they come out in 64 and 68 and not 84 and 88? Um, and, and with that prodding, uh, the students were able to come up with uh, the developments in, uh, in the U.S. civil rights movement, okay, actually getting uh, African American voters, uh, particularly in the South, uh, to um, the registration office so that they could actually, uh, you know, get get to the ballot. Um, I showed them this one, and it's not just uh, this stamp from 1979 is not just a. Um, Hoorah uh, military stamp here. There's also another development with uh, Vietnam War memory in 1979. Um, this is actually the same year that the fund uh, began to, that paid for, that paid for the construction of uh, the Vietnam Wall in Washington, D.C. Certainly um, an iconic stop on any uh, tourist itinerary um, to our nation's capital. Uh, we also have this stamp uh, for for urban planners. Uh, this stamp comes out in 1967, and and I ask my students, well, why why is a plan for better cities stamp issued uh, in 1967? And, and I suspect uh, you know, to 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 wrap your head around this one, uh, you you have to understand what's happening in in U.S. cities. Uh, in the 10 odd years, 10, 15 years prior. I mean, if you just look at the census records, um, if you look at the industrial cities of the North, uh, these Rust Belt cities, I mean, the, they reached their peak populations in the, in the 1950 and 1960 census. Uh, and this move to suburbia uh, just wreaked havoc for planners. This is the... <laughs> For many of these cities, this is the first time where their population is not going up, uh, but it's going down. And, and how does uh, urban planning respond to that? Um, so in addition to uh, those sorts of issues, right, stamps with a kind of a, a singular uh, a current uh, event associated with them, um, I also uh, include a discussion of, of stamps with, with some outdated language, right? We don't use these words anymore. Uh, and uh, there, was, there were several, you know, crippled children, uh, hope for the crippled. Uh, the one in the middle is from 67, I believe. Uh, you know, great stamps, but we just, you know, crippled is, it's a very dated term. Um, and probably the one that, that generates the most nervous laughter is this stamp from 1974. Um, 
when I put when I project this one on the screen, uh, usually about half of the students um, cover their mouth. I mean, they're just amazed that uh, a U.S. postage stamp uh, would include uh, this this verbiage. Um, and it wasn't all that long long ago, but at the same time, this was and this was a medical term. This was a medical term uh, just a couple of generations ago. Um, this stamp uh, was actually uh, a little controversial when it came uh, out in the, I believe, the early 80s. Um, and I, I think it's fair to say that neither of these stamps would be produced today. Um, the, the alcoholism stamp, uh, kind of funny, the, the message underneath, uh, some, some people perceive this as, well, was this a... Uh, was this a message from the sender of the letter to the receiver of the letter? You can beat it, which is kind of a, I, I, I hope we can find some humor in that. Um, you know, somebody at the advisory committee uh, gave their stamp of approval, no pun intended, I guess, uh, for that one. And, and sure enough, uh, <laughs> out, out it went. Uh, I think some of the other stamps that would have some uh, difficulty making it through the advisory committee today uh, are the numerous stamps um, that have been issued over the years uh, with, that relate to uh, Confederate history. And, and I think uh, one could liken this to the, the ongoing debates um, about uh, or over Confederate monuments um, in the United States. And even you know, filmmaker D.W. Griffith uh, probably uh, would not be put on a stamp um, today. I, th I think something to, th to think about uh, with stamps is, uh, is about how stories are told or how stamps tell stories. Um, certainly uh, a really famous episode in the Spanish-American War uh, would be Teddy Roosevelt's charge up San Juan Hill. Um, no doubt you, uh, I suspect many of you have seen this photograph uh, of, of Teddy before. Um, and that photograph, uh, this famous photograph, that's actually the cropped photograph. Uh, the original photograph was uh, a bit larger and included some more people. Um, and you can probably best see this. Uh, there's Teddy. You can best see this on the right, uh, but there are some uh, some black soldiers in this photo, again, that are certainly omitted uh, in the more famous uh, cropped photo, okay? And, and if I take this to postage stamps, right, certainly stamps have a, a commemorative ability. Um, in, in 1948, to commemorate the 50th uh 50th anniversary of, uh, of 1898 here, um, the Rough Riders get a stamp. Uh, the Buffalo Soldiers, they don't get a stamp until 1994. Um, and, I, and, I, and I wonder if, I think this raises questions about historical erasure, uh, and then maybe, uh, inclusion after the fact, inclusion down the road, okay? What does this tell us about uh, American history uh, in the 20th century? Um, perhaps some of you are familiar with this uh, sheet. Uh, this is a 50th anniversary sheet of the end of World War II. And I'll draw your attention to the stamp on the bottom in the middle. Uh, that's Harry Truman, but that's not the original stamp that was proposed for this sheet. Um, the original stamp for this sheet was uh, the atomic bomb hastening the end of the war. And uh, this was replaced with Harry Truman uh, because if the atomic bomb appears on a stamp, does how, is this glorifying the bomb? Well, it's certainly, this is perceived by some as insensitive. Uh, and I think this is, uh, I mean, this is right at the same time when the Smithsonian 
uh, is going through uh, the exhibit ordeal with the Enola Gay, uh, or going through the Enola Gay exhibit, which was um, ultimately pulled from, uh, from the museum. Um, and so certainly there have been um, other stamps that have caused um, controversy when issued. Um, in the 1960s, when the first Christmas stamps were issued, um, and, I, and I think these stamps are, are really pretty, I mean, they're really beautiful stamps, uh, the 62 and 63 Christmas stamps, I mean, questions were raised about whether the federal government should be promoting a religious holiday. Right. This is this is supposed to be a secular nation, separation of church and state. Why is a federal? Uh, why is this postal service, you know, promoting only one, only one faith? Uh, and perhaps um, more more humorously, uh, in the late eighties, uh, when this uh, great uh, plate of uh, I think most people would say dinosaurs. I think the way it was actually phrased uh, by the Postal Service was extinct animals or something like that. Um, but the people that got riled up about this one were uh, paleontologists, okay? Uh, because apparently brontosaurus was an outdated term. Uh, and then that uh, flying I, I guess I'm not supposed to call it a dinosaur because I'm not sure if it qualifies, but that flying uh, bird-like uh, creature, uh, d again, doesn't qualify as a, as a dinosaur, right? Um, so, <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I would love to, uh, I, I, guess I suspect um, those on the call, you know, have, probably have some more ideas uh, for me that I could, that I can include um, when I do this in the future. Um, but I guess to, to, to um, wrap things up and then kind of get into a, a discussion or a, or a Q and A or anything, I mean, I, I think I found stamps, using stamps in the classroom to be a worthwhile exercise uh, because students enjoy interacting with uh, artifacts and material culture. Uh, and, and these things are also really easy to get, get your hands on. Uh, the subjects of stamps are incredibly far reaching. Uh, and while some stamps hold up better than others, uh, to be sure, uh, stamps can teach us about the desires and anxieties uh, and values of a society. So uh, with that, I will say uh, thank you. And, um, you know, I would love to um, an answer any questions or we can, uh, you know, have a larger, a larger discussion. Oh, that, that was fabulous. Thank you so much for that. I, I had to get off my the camera to go run downstairs and uh, what all you, your topicals, that's my favorite. That's, that's what I have right here. Um, and you're right with the language and, and how you can uh, extrapolate what's happening culturally um, by what's going on in the stamp. And I know a lot of people here in, in the room can appreciate that very much. And, and they'll go way back in time, you know, and tell you what was going on. That's postal history. So thank you. I, I know that by the chat that there was a lot of interest and, and a lot of smiles. I don't know if you could watch the gallery, but you, uh, you, made, you entertained a lot of people. So thank you very much for that. Um, do we have, uh, Raquel gives the big thumbs up, awesome. Do we have any questions, friends? All right, go ahead and unmute uh, yourself. I am muted. Uh, David, I want to say thank you for the presentation. I tried to, this is Glenn, I'm in Carolina. I tried to get uh, a professor I know who also uses stamps in his classroom. Uh, his name is Daniel Rabinovich. He's a chemistry teacher. Hmm. And, and tying along the topical line, he specifically uses chemistry on stamps as part of his instructional tool and, and, and does that and with a college audience. Uh, is very passionate about him also. I tried to get it, him an invite to this also, but I'll send him uh, your email and contact. Maybe you guys can, can get together in the future. Yeah, interesting. Daniel Rabinovich. 
yes, he is a member of APS. He's a member of the Charlotte Club. Um, and, uh, and I, like I said, I try and track him down, but he may, he may not be uh, available during these times. Yeah, I don't know. But as an aside, uh, these stamp chats are being recorded. So let your let him know that he can go over to the APS YouTube and, okay. and watch, and then you know then join that conversation. And I'll put my my email in the chat. You give him my email too, because we would love to hear more of this. This is great. This is. I, I sent it to him. Yeah. Good. Yeah. This, this is my lightning rod. This is. <laughs> so. Great. Anyone else? Oh, there we go. Just uh, like like you can see my pointer finger. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> David, that was fantastic. Um, I am a faculty member here at Virginia Commonwealth University. I teach physics, uh, medical physics. And in my last class that I taught in the fall, I started building postage stamps into the lecture. And it's I've had a lot of fun with it, just researching the different stamps, how they can fit in with diagnostic medical imaging, uh, how they fit in with basic quantum mechanics. There's a lot of good stuff out there. And I, actually now, I've since I've been through it once with my students, I've gone backwards now and put them into a separate presentation I was going to give to my stamp club, which actually should have happened last Tuesday, except we got it canceled now. But it's just been a project I have loved doing. So I have a whole presentation on diagnostic medical imaging on postage stamps. Huh. Interesting. Well, hey, uh, go Rams. But, oh, thanks. <laughs> but I, I really enjoyed this. You know, I've struggled with, you know, it's, it's easy to, if I'm talking about, say, the electromagnetic spectrum. There's some really great EMR stamps out there with uh, spectra on it or you get into uh, x-rays and Röntgen. There's tons of Röntgen stamps out there. Um, others I have, there's various stamps on x-ray tubes that I throw in. And um, the different uh, x-ray interactions with matter, the stamps and the concern those. And of course, all the imaging modalities, um, projection radiography, mammography, there's a ton of stamps. CT, there's a couple. And I even throw a stamp in on my final exam. So one of the stamps from Guinea Bissau has a particular inventor on it, but it has the wrong name underneath. So I talk about the stamp in my class, and on the final exam, I throw in a bonus question, who is pictured on this stamp? But it has the wrong name at the bottom. <laughs> if they're paying attention, they'll get the credit, right? Uh, sadly, I, not everyone got, a, got that one correct. <laughs> <Yeah>. Lost two points. <laughs> yeah. One of the answers I have is Röntgen, and this guy doesn't have a beard, so he's obviously not Röntgen, but I put a picture of Röntgen on the exam, and they still got it wrong. Maybe they'll learn. <laughs> but I really appreciate this. I love doing stamps in my lectures. The students kind of roll their eyes, but that's, that's all the better. Yeah, I mean, I think for, for one reason or another, uh, you know, having, if you can have some some tangible uh some tangible pieces that you can bring into the classroom um i think that pro i mean there's probably some uh classroom psychologists out there that would say right that that would appeal to different learning styles as well um it's not just sitting in the classroom and and, and hearing a lecture and I'm, and I'm glad to do that too um but i love uh, your idea of handing out postcards <laughs> There's actually a 33 cent stamp from the late 80s, I think, that talks that it was part of a commemorative sheet, but it's a medical a medical imaging stamp. And I, at the beginning of the year, I actually wanted to find a bunch of these to give to the students and tell them to write a letter home to their mom, how much they're enjoying the class. But it's part of a commemorative sheet. You can't find the individual stamps, or at least I haven't been able to yet. And the individual hmm. stamps were fairly expensive. Well, if if you do that in class, just just remind them where the uh, where the stamp is to be placed and where you write the address. Thank you. I never thought of that issue. Yes, oh, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> and if you read the chat box, Frank, yes, we would love to see you on a uh, yeah. Tom Bowman's giving you the thumbs up. Yeah, we would love to have you talk to us about how you use stamps in the classroom as well. I was afraid you would ask. I've watched some of the presentations 
here the last couple of weeks, and I am not of that caliber. Uh, I have a presentation ready. I could do it sometime, but well, talk to me later. I'm muted. Hey, Frank. Look, and, and I think Frank. that the beauty of this this forum that we have, and it's kind of, and, and, and I hope that everyone will under, appreciate it as a compliment, but our, the APS stamp chats are really revered, you know, as a place for philately as a whole where we can all gather, whether we're topical, whether we're in the classroom, you know, it's, it, it really encourages the scope and breadth of the hobby. So we don't need to get, you know, we'd like to get minutia, but we, but we also pan out. So I think that, that this why, that's one of the reasons why we so enjoyed this presentation. Frank, you're very um, personable. It, you come I, across well, you need to do a stamp chat. That was our <laughs> content manager, Tom Lobey. Talk to me later, Heidi. <laughs> Will do. Go ahead, Eric. Unmute yourself, hon. Please. Hey, yeah. David. David, great presentation, Everybody man. Um, yeah, thanks a lot, David. For me, it was very interesting. As I said, I started collecting stamps uh in in the early 70s uh with an uncle of mine who was living in newark and i was living in germany so we exchanged pretty much exactly the stamps you have been showing and and for me it's it's really interesting how much uh, especially american stamps show about american society yeah uh, it's it's like it's a completely different picture than we get from Hollywood. I guess you all guys know that we always think Hollywood is identical to the U.S. Well, hmm. it's two things: the president is American and and Hollywood is American. And and I'm I'm always fascinated by by those stamps that they give such a differentiated view of of what is happening. And and I I started in the 70s, and I as a kid I was showing American stamps uh in in stamp shows in germany so so showing showing traditional philately with stamps from the 70s especially bicentennial uh now i'm really far off that and doing advanced postal history of french india and stuff like that but but i i think I, tomorrow i have to look back to my american stamps from the early <laughs> 70s yeah and see how beautiful they are and how interesting topics they show thanks a lot yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thanks for your comment. Yeah, we we boy, we love to put um, presidents on stamps. I I, I will uh, include this little caveat. I, I, a student uh, this semester, um, and he and he is from Marion County, Ohio, and uh, and of course the president from and uh, Marion County, Ohio, is Warren G. Harding, and uh, the student wrote to the advisor committee uh, that he would like to see uh, another Harding stamp and uh, and, and there, there's that uh, I think it was a sheet from the mid 80s maybe 80, 1986 perhaps uh, where all of the presidents to that point um, uh, appeared um, including Harding, obviously, uh, but the advisory committee told him, uh, no, but you'll be glad to know that there was a stamp from 1986 that featured Warren Harding. Um, so I think we we love, I mean, how many Washington and Lincoln and, and Jefferson stamps have we had? Uh, quite a few, but boy, I guess if uh, if, you, if you're not a good president, you, you only get one. <laughs> Rick Howell, go ahead. I Oops. wanted to thank you, David. It was a great presentation. Be, being the age that I am, uh, I, I recognize quite a few of those little problems there. Uh, I just wanted to point out to you that uh, paleontologists now say that the brontosaurus is an acceptable species of dinosaur. So, they, they, they give that one uh, credit now, huh? Yeah, yeah, they reversed their decision on that. Huh? Yeah, good stuff. I mean, I I think that's the name that I'm I've always been familiar with. I'm I'm not sure what uh, what name they wanted to use in um, in 1989, but anyway, I, I think it was in that article that I uh, New York. Yeah, Times it was, it was a very long term. I don't remember what it was. <laughs> yeah, funny. 
but thanks for your presentation. I really enjoyed it. And Rick's on all of our talks, so believe me. I mean, this, this is everything that we want to be hearing. Tom Bowman. David, thank you. Hey, one one thing. I have teachers, so I'm going to link this to my daughters, who are video teaching right now, elementary and middle school. But McGruff was part of a TV commercial for the Crime Watch. To see you can write that down in your notes. Yeah, you know, I think they had a uh, a contest to name him. Actually, yes. Uh, I mean, that, that, that's kind of before my time, I guess. I'm. I'm. Uh, thank you. But yeah, th yeah. Thanks for your comment. No, no. Thank you for dating me. <laughs> no, I know. Yeah, and me. Thanks. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's a, it's fascinating to see the stories. I Before we left, uh, you know, for the, the stay at home, uh, I had been, I had, I got three huge boxes of uh, stamps on covers. And it, it, I was, a, you know, I studied uh, anthropology in school. And so to see these stamps, you, you know, I think 300 years, if we time hopped, boy, United States would just, you know, the, the unions and the metal working together and osteopathy, you know, like what? It, it, <laughs> the highways, highway beautification, it's really a fascinating story to tell, mm. truly. Who else gets excited? Who else likes, it? what is the topic is of this? I call it social progress. Tom or Richard or Frank, what, are, what is this topical called? these U.S. messages. It's just a philosophy for, for producing stamps, I think, and the British seem to be doing the same thing as well. They just recently put out a series of James Bond stamps. So uh, it's, it's a popular thing. Okay, so there, there's philosophy. not... Go ahead, Tom. Sorry. The philosophy of the stamps in the beginning were to promote history and historical events. Stamp sales slipped off. And now you got Sesame Street ice cream cones and everything else on there. <laughs> there is no philosophy anymore just to produce and sell stamps. We've become like, since the 80s, the, uh, I don't want to put, no, not the 80s, since to the turn of the century, the uh, promotion of stamps versus the promotion of history on stamps. But it, it does show a, a segment of our society, though, and I, I think that's valuable to some extent. Me too. Including including Sesame Street. I was very choosy with when I sent my tax return, which one of the which one of the Muppets that I was gonna send to the IRS. <laughs> <laughs> Count Dracula. <laughs> The count, it's a good one. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah. Okay, Glenn, you wanted to speak. Was 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 that before or after they sent your uh, incentive stimulus money uh, uh, in? But yeah. But anyway, I, I put the I put my long comment up in the chat. We talk about in teaching stamp collecting to youth, especially as part of the stamp collecting merit badge. Requirement one, of course, it was also helpful that it was written by the APS. Uh, is discuss how you, meaning the scout, can understand, better understand, uh, people, places, institutions, history, and geography as a result of stamp collecting. I mean, we're all APS members, so it's kind of water under the bridge for many of us, but teaching this to, to other people and, and to why certain things and how certain things get onto stamps, uh, I believe uh, David really uh, touched on it, and um, you know we could go around in circles with this all day. Glenn, Glenn, I tell you what, I maybe this uh, speaks to how how recent I I've arrived to this um, because I I you are you're talking to an Eagle Scout, but I don't think I got the stamp collecting merit badge. I don't think I did. I, I'd have to go consult the uh, the sash someplace in my folks uh, you know attic closet. <laughs> were Were you a collector when you were a youth? 
I, I was not. No, I mean, I got into postcards before I uh, got into stamps. It was I, I really fell into the stamps because of this uh, of all of these unused sheets that um, that were found in my grandparents' house. Okay. So, okay. Um, and you know, and I guess mo you know, I, I mean, I from from what I understand, most most of the stamps. Uh, you know, I don't know, in the last century or so. I mean, if you if you want stamps that are, are worth anything, it could be pretty old. Um, and you can go to any coin and stamp shop. And I mean, usually I, I buy them at about 75% of face value. You're still paying too much. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, probably. Right? Are you going to be teaching this again? Well, I, I included this in uh, in in a material culture class this semester, and I think um, when I teach public history classes, yeah, I, I give I give a week to this stuff um, because I mean this is I mean stamps, postcards. Um, I mean it's relatively inexpensive to get your hands on, and and though and though maybe some some my. I I uh, I regret that we've gone to this self adhesive uh, form, um, probably like many of us in the room here. Uh, but we've been using stamps for for over 100, you know, 150 years. So uh, it's a commonality from from your folks and your grand folks, and and even before that. I really I like that. I like. I always think about the universality of stamps, but I like that intergenerational. That's that, that, that's that's very sweet. Richard Morrill, who's on the call, he's from uh, London, the British Library. He, he curates the philatelic studies. He's, I think, he was the first one to, to introduce me to the term material culture. And uh, do you hear me, Richard? Yeah, that, I hear you. Yeah, so I, I'm saying that you, you know, you're you're a high promoter of stamps material culture, and you're a real fan of that. Yeah, I think I think thematics, thematic collecting in particular, it's got a unique position in in the hobby and the subject as a whole to combine also postal history. So you get a lot of people talking about the semiotics and design of the stamp, of course there's another half of that how how is the stamp disseminated so it'd be good to see a lot more studies incorporating postal history and, and look, looking at how these stamps travel how they're collected but um you know many of the great theorists uh, including people like abby vorberg who established the warburg institute um and walter benjamin you know they, they were avid philatelists and what um uh, Vorberg once turned around and said, you know, if, if civilization collapsed overnight, all you would need to reconstruct modern society would be a, a good stamp album because mm. it will reconstruct the social hierarchies, the economics. And this guy founded modern art history. He wanted to write an art history of philately. So, you know, it's something that we're kind of coming back to that kind of early theorists were deeply passionate about. I mean, stamps are an inherent part of our global visual material culture and I think tonight's presentation just demonstrated that beautifully thank you you're getting a thumbs up from Rick too absolutely what what was your David when you were looking at those stamps when because I, I'm I'm relic I'm new to the hobby myself so I I'm, I'm always surprised you know what can you recall your favorite you know like your top five when you were looking at these old stamps yeah i'm a, I'm a baseball nut so in, in 1939 there was a 100th anniversary of baseball stamp uh it's a it's a three three center uh and it's beautiful blue backgrounds uh and then uh there there was and then later i think this probably would have been in the early 80s uh there's babe ruth and some some bobby jones stamps you know enjoy the golf as well but yeah, I'm, a, I'm a sports guy so that uh you know when, when 
when the baseballers make the uh, make the postage stamp, it's um, yeah, it's tough to beat. Roberto Clemente has a beautiful stamp as well. He does. I'm just yeah. I was going through stamps. Yep. Our uh, chief content officer Tom Lobe, huge baseball fan. We had to to uh, you know make a dog leg. Our AP was supposed to be all about baseball. <laughs> and Tom Bowman. It is there there. it is. <laughs> Got it. Did your students, um, did you, did, did you, did you ever bring in stamps? Did they, was it solely on the, the, sli the slides or? I did, yeah. The kind of the, the end project in that, in, in the J-term class, um, each student was to go out and find mm -hmm. a stamp uh, that spoke to a uh, particular era or issue. Um, and then we were able to, to blow them up and mount them on foam core. And then we, we installed them in a little display case in the, in the college library. So, uh, yeah. And, and that, I mean, that, I mean, we, we were in Western PA, so, you know, sure enough, somebody did the Willie Stargell, uh, Pittsburgh Pirates stamp, but then we also had, you know, everything from uh, breast cancer awareness to, uh, to Robert E. Lee to, you name it runs the gamut and isn't that the truth I, I i always say there's a stamp for it there is a stamp for just about everything exactly. yeah <laughs> and, you know i don't know if you kept up on you know i don't know how many like i'll get to the point the covid stamps have already started to come out i don't know if you've no seen kidding. Those. yeah iran vietnam china switzerland and I don't know if any other countries have come out, but they're they're fascinating. Right. And the different interpretations. Richard Morrow last week uh, sent out a tweet about the Chinese stamp and how you can look at it and how there's division or... You hmm. wanna talk about that, Richard, or no? Um. Wow. Well, I mean, it's just subjective, but it's just deconstructing the message on the stamps and, and looking at reasons why perhaps it's not been issued. Um, one, one, there's there's two iterations of the design. One has a pagoda that can be associated with a famous pagoda in Wuhan, which of course was um, due to the po recent, more recent politics of the Chinese of trying to kind of distance themselves a bit from being the, the epicenter of this virus. The other one is is a the the character for crowd in the middle of the stamp. So it's a single design over two stamps, and they're perforated down the middle of the design. And in effect, it, the character means masses. They split the masses um, in doing that. Um, and you could look at that both ways. You know, it could be seen as a way to socially distance, but at the same time, it could be seen as slightly um, subversive. And that could be a po another possible reason why it was why they're delaying the release of it. Um, interestingly, the other design doesn't have the pagoda, and it doesn't have the the character for for crowd or masses. Is that fascinating. It's really cool. It, I mean, it's better to look at, I think, than talk about. <laughs> yeah. Well, are you looking at the stamps or no, David? Uh, I'm just reading some of the comments here. Is there a stamp commemorating moonshine? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's good. Somehow I think that there must be. Yeah, well, I mean, it's... Frank's nodding in agreement, yes. Last <laughs> week we did uh, the beer revenues and I... I prepared, you know, like five minutes of Zen with, with beer stamps, yes. Beer and wine, oh, what is Glenn showing us, about to show us? Still the, in this month's, last, uh, yeah, this month's ATA publication. Oh, the beer. Uh, was, a, was the thing on the beer, yeah. And of course, yesterday, you know, they just canceled Oktoberfest, so I'm, I'm in mourning by proxy for the future. But there is a whole sub, group uh with ata there's a picture of a beer stamp and a, and a and a truck for transportation there's all kinds of 
things in that uh, topical group regarding it. I have a couple of things with, with beer and whiskey in my own sub small collection there, which is why I, I took this out to keep it. So thank you. Um, to the ATA. All right. Um, Heidi, I'm wondering if, if I could ask a question to the room, actually. By uh, all means. I, I am uh, probably most interested in the, uh, the stamps that today we, we would not um, perceive those as politically correct. Mm. And I, I gave some examples, um, but I want to know, do you have some more? Uh, you, you've you stamp folks in the room know a heck of a lot more about this than I do, but um, can you can you give me some other examples of stamps that would not be issued uh, in in the 21st century? I'm looking at them right now. I mean, I don't think that this is like verboten, but this, uh, you know, hire the disabled. I mean, that. I'm looking because there, there's one, you know, I, I got to watch my language. I'm not supposed yeah. to say these things, but it's a, it's, it's a hiring thing. It's employing a certain hmm. group, of people, group of people. Um, I'm look, I, I have your information, so I know that I can get to you. And I'm sure my friends here have tons. Well, if they're into this, this, this topic, but yes. The question, the answer to your question is yes. I think, I think if you, if you look at, at the history and also the topics of U.S. stamps, um, and you compare it to other countries, like, like, let's say, take Germany, yeah, or, mm -hmm. or very interesting for me, East Germany, because it's a dead country now, yeah. Uh, when you you have much much more of those stamp issues which you just cannot believe anymore yeah it's it's like it's also the history of stamps also show the history of a country yeah it's like like mm -hmm. us has 200 something undisrupted history yeah um germany is completely different yeah um and for for example we had the discussion before um, Switzerland, Switzerland has also a very long history, also of stamps, but Switzerland issues very, very small number of stamps. Yeah, it's like, I, I don't know, I think we have maximum, maximum seven to eight commemorative stamps per year, maximum. Hmm. Yeah, so, so of course, this is also interesting to see, okay, what are the topics of but what does a country choose if you only have so few stamps that you can make an anniversary or show something? Yeah, uh, and it's quite interesting to compare that. And then you, of course, we had the talk about uh, it's like this pop culture or youth culture, social media thing, where where the POs in Great Britain or or. Uh, in the US very strongly, also in France, trying to get people buy stamps. Yeah, it's like, why would you issue, the Swiss post office will never issue a Star Wars stamp. Never, yeah. Um, uh, they have a couple of comic figures before, yeah. Um, but, but they are very restrictive in all that, yeah. And it's very interesting to compare that and see in 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 also also I just recently I've been looking at the stamps of East Germany, uh, and they were very political, yeah. But but also the East Germans knew that that like like the policies within their country and the policies of stamps being very international is something different. So so of course they use stamps a lot to promote a, an image of the country that they hope for. And so, so it's very interesting to have a look at those things. So, so I, I really think uh, there's a lot of potential in what you're doing and also looking in other countries here. Yeah? If I compare Canada, yeah, Canada is like also a country with much less stamps compared to the US. Mm -hmm. I think we could have a spin-off show, the, you know, the anthropology of stamps or something. I think yeah. this could be, you know, this could definitely be a <laughs> For sure. And on that note, friends, do have a check see on the chat while I bid us a fond adieu. 
Dr. David Strittmatter, thank you so much. He's Professor of Public History and Museum Studies at Ohio Northern University. Thank you so much for joining us on APS. And you will you always have a hot seat here if you'd like to join us. Uh, again, members, APS members, thank you for your support. You know, it, it's talks like these that, that really, I think, will, will curve and, and, and pique the interest of, of non-philatelists. Um, this is this is the type of, of topic that you know, I would encourage you to invite your friends, particularly any of us trying to get for that 2020, uh, that's our membership goal of 2020 new APS members. So uh, if they weren't on the call today, then please guide them over to the YouTube recording. Uh, I think they'll get a lot out of it. Um, again, thank you so much for your participation. Everybody stay healthy. Stay well. Tomorrow we'll be having our stamp chat at 3 p.m. with Eric Scherer. He's uh, known as Tobias here under the, yeah. our stamp chat. <laughs> He'll be speaking with us about, of course, um, postal history. Correct? Yes. Correct. Okay. Great. Wonderful. So do join us tomorrow, APS, 3 p.m. Eastern. Thanks so much for joining us, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks again. Thanks, Professor. Thank bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Good day. Good day.